I thank you for being here. It's a beautiful day, but we must learn. And um, I am with Money Management International. So how many of you have heard of us? Ah, awesome. What I'm going to do first is go over the um, information that it's in the uh, packet. And um, on the right hand side, you see this brochure, flat brochure. So this right here tells you in great detail who we are and what we do. And I'm going to give you a brief introduction because um, once I'm done here, it's not just about cutting the cord and I'm gone. So um, there is additional assistance that we offer for uh, personal finances. And uh, Money Management International is a nonprofit organization. We are the largest full service credit counseling agency in the United States, and we've been in business since 1958. And all of the counseling that we provide is confidential and free to the consumers. So the first topic that we um, have here is the budget and credit counseling. Budgeting, it is for anyone that is wanting to fine tune that budget, start that budget, or just seeing, um, you know, what is going on? How come I'm always in this roller coaster of ups and downs and what's going on? So as a third party, we give you options and recommendations on how to better your situation with your budget. The credit part, also a very misunderstood topic out there, confusing, stressful, and everybody's learning from everybody. So what we do is we, um, based on your information, we um, address the issue and give you again options and recommendations on how to better that situation. And um, that's for credit right there. We do pull one credit report just to address and see what is that you're seeing and to have the expert eye um, interpret your information. But um, that is our work credit report and there's no charge for it. It doesn't hurt your credit scores. It is just to see the situation. It's the experienced credit report that we pull. But if you guys have yours um, also, the other two, or have all three, and so we can address everything, that's fine, no problem. The other service is that we have a debt management plan. This debt management plan, it is for unsecured debt and credit card debt. And the purpose of this plan, it is for uh, people that are um, overwhelmed with credit already, um, losing control, or have high interest rates accounts, or they just want to get out of debt. So what we do is we combine all the accounts into a one monthly payment. That payment will be dispersed by Money Management International, sent out to your creditors. This right here, it is not bankruptcy. It is not settlements. You will be paying 100% of your balances. And that's the beauty of it, because again, it is not bankruptcy and it is not settlements. The creditors have already um, are working with Money Management International in um, assisting the consumers to lowering the interest rates and um, most of the times also the minimum payments. So it's a win-win situation for the consumer and for the creditor. Because for us, we will save time and money on paying them back. And then for them, they will get their money. So that's the debt management plan right there. So if you were to call us and ask for a budgeting class, the um, counselor might be also introducing you to the plan as an other alternative, saying, you know what, you might want to take a look at this plan that we have here also. Um, the other service is education, such as what I'm doing today. Come out into the community, present topics. Um, I'm invited, the host decides which topic I'm presenting. And um, also, we have um, additional education uh, information on our website. We have articles, we have newsletters, we have forms. Um, we have an array of information online. And it's giving you the website right here as to um, how to tap into us. The other service is that we are a HUD approved housing counseling agency. And we provide um, counseling for people that have already bought their homes to prevent foreclosure in case they're um, always running late or they're going to be missing payments or they're foreseeing that you know, there's going to be a layoff or they're going to be um, reduction of income, something that is going to be a drastic change and it's going to affect the uh, p mortgage payment. We advise you or we um, encourage you to um, give us a call to see how to manage that situation to stay afloat and again to avoid foreclosure. The other service is that um, I also conduct the eight hour first time home buyers workshop. 
this is in Houston, and uh, <laughs> that, um, that uh, workshop right there, it serves as for two uh, purposes. The first one is um, education. Uh, buying a house is not like saying, you know, I'm going to buy a purse or a pair of shoes. It's a very big investment. You, again, you hear a lot of different information from everybody because it works differently from everybody. So in that workshop, what I do, I give the guidelines and tools as to how to be prepared to buy in your first home. The second part for that workshop is because um, in Houston, we also have down payment assistance programs. And if the people, the person is going to be um, looking into the down payment assistance programs, they are required to attend the eight hour class. Um, here in the gray area, that's our contact information, our phone number. We are nationwide and we do provide telephone counseling. So um, as long as you're dialing this number, you are in contact with Money Management International. And yes, that's not a mistypo, it's saying 24-7. Yes, that is correct. Telephone counselors are available 24-7. If you're not sleeping, we're not sleeping. We heard it out there that people, you know, stay up at night thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay bills? So I have bills and blah, blah, blah. So come on, you know, call us and we'll discuss it, how this is going to be accomplished. So once again, in the gray area, that's our contact information. And in a nutshell, this is who we are and what we do for the community. You may share this information with your family and your friends, coworkers. We are a community service. And once again, the counseling service is completely free and it's confidential. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get an assessment and uh, you'll have an action plan. You'll be talking to a counselor. And um, again, the beauty of it, they give you options and recommendations on how to address your issue. Any questions about my company? No? Okay. So what I'm going to be covering the next um, handout you see there is avoiding um, the art of scams. And um, I'll go with that in, a, that's what I'm going to cover as a topic. Then you'll see this brochure in there too, ways to avoid fraud. So this at a glance, you'll have the information. You can, you know, it's a brochure, you open it and just to give you reminders, quickly uh, tips, you can glance through it. And then at the end, you have this program evaluation form. So at the end of the presentation of both topics, please do evaluate my presentation. This is to better our services in the community. And um, it's confidential. As you can see, it's not asking you for a name, email address, nothing. Just uh, the grading of the uh, presentation. On the other side, you will see um, the identity theft topic. And that's the, uh, again, what I'm going to cover in detail. And then you have a brochure and a uh, slip like this, right? So once again, the brochure at a glance will let you know identity theft, what to know and what to do. You have it in your hand, you glance at it, reminder. Also this little flat right here is a reminder to have it by your electronics, at work, um, somewhere just as reminders um, to get this, um, what to do changing your passwords every 90 days, shredding every piece of paper that you have with important information, and um, locking up the important information. It seems so simple, but yet, you know, sometimes we don't follow it as a routine, and maybe that's why uh, we get forgetful in things like that, like locking up the papers or having them in a box in the closet somewhere secured. So again, this is just a quick reminder of what needs to be done quickly. The next page that you see that there is recovering for, from identity theft. So if identity theft has happened to you, then um, a, at a glance, you have all the steps here quickly to take, very quickly. And the last thing that you have on that uh, handout is this book right here. By God, this book is well worth it being here and having it. As you can see, it's preparing you from A to C. God forbid, you know, if you, you, um, identity theft was to happen to you. But you know the beauty of the book? It goes into having the um, sample letters for you. If you have identity theft only with a credit card, or if you only had identity theft with um, the, ATM machine, uh, the ATM card, 
or um, your children's information. So my goodness, this book has the letters that you need to send and also a step-by-step, -step, even by how to mail it, where to mail it, um, the days it's gonna take for research. I mean, very detailed and very helpful. I mean, I, I, this one right here, it's gold to me. <laughs> because again, um, a lot of people tells us, you know, oh, identity theft, oh yeah, take care of it, deal with it. And then what, or how do I do it, right? And uh, even as simple as to um, identity theft, uh, filling out the police report or contacting your credit bureaus. So again, I mean, it goes step by step. That book, I am not gonna go into detail because again, it is in case it happens to prepare you and in sections, you'll know where to go and what to do, okay? Any questions or comments so far? All right, so let's get back into the uh, handout that looks like this, the art of scam, the handout. So what is a scam? Um, so a scam is an attempt to defraud a person or a group by gaining their confidence. That's what they're looking for. They're wanting to um, you know, be our friends and uh, gain our confidence. And so how many um, people do you think have been scammed in the United States annually? About how many people, what do you think? Millions, could be, huh? I mean, certainly there's room for it, millions. But you know what, in all this uh, research and data that I have, there's no actual number. You know why? Because most um, really people are embarrassed and they don't wanna report it. So there's actually, I mean, there could be millions and millions, of course, but they don't wanna report it because they are embarrassed. So, who is this thief? What do you think? What does it look like, the thief? Does it wear a ski mask? Does it, um, is it one of your friends? Is it one of your relatives? <laughs> you know what, it is all of the above. It could be anyone. A coworker, it could be your friend, it could be your relative, you know, desperate times. Just don't know. So it's anyone, and uh, it could happen to any of us. So what are they stealing from us? What do you think they're stealing from us, these people? Social your social security? Mm -hmm. Your identity, your time, your uh, confidence, and your security. So that's what they're looking for. So uh, I'm mentioning these things so you can be always on the alert. I hate to, you know, gosh, that trust, the trust part, God, I, 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 it's hard, I, I feel bad about it, but you know what, I am always have to be on my guards. I have to be. Again, it just doesn't, you know, like I said, a relative, a friend, it can be coming from every direction. And if we're so openly in trusting, you guess what, that's what, how they enter. So we have to be on guard. So what they're stealing from us is our identity, our time, our money, our confidence, and the security that we have. Yeah, they don't have it, so they wish they do, and that's how they go about it. So the uh, primary purpose of this presentation is to raise the awareness of the potential scams and fraud and how to avoid being a victim. And upon the completion of the class, you'll have a better understanding and I'm gonna cover the topics as um, why scams and fraud happens, who are likely um, to be the victims, the types of scams out there, how to recognize a scam, and how to minimize the risk of becoming that um, victim. So those are the topics in that handout. There are the topics in the handout for you, okay? Let's get started. So let's go with the uh, why scams and fraud happen. Why would you think that a scam could happen to you? Well, generally the scammers are success successful because what they're looking is um, they're uh, promising us uh, cash, they're promising trips, they're promising um, 
lifetime prices. And that gets us our attention. And by thinking of the price or thinking of the item, we're thinking, oh, wow, I did it. I got a price here. And that's what we're thinking. We're distracted, just like, oh, I am so lucky because I've never won anything. But guess what? The, the person quickly is talking and filling you out with all this information, and either you're agreeing and agreeing and agreeing, or you're signing and signing and signing away your stuff. So that's how they're doing. They're distracting you by saying those things. You have won a trip. You're gonna win cash. Or you have this item like a car, or you're gonna even win a house. Something so huge like that. And we are just so ecstatic and happy that we forget everything else. We blank it out. So that's one of the uh, ways. And then the other ways could be they are uh, pressuring us. The pressure tra tactics. And in pressuring us, again, we're trusting and we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings and we want to be polite and mannered that we say, you know, we're kind of like taking it in too. And they keep going and going and going at us until we break. So it's the pressure part that we're uh, thinking that we're, gonna be, we're not going to be polite if we just walk away, we say no, or if we um, kind of rude, right? That's what we're thinking. They don't... They don't care about our feelings. They're not thinking about our feelings. They're thinking, hey, how am I going to get ahead of this one right now? So it's the pressure tactic that they're doing uh, out there for us. And then the last one, you've heard it and you've seen it also, intimidation. They're intimidating you. They're scaring you to death. Like, if you don't do it right now, you know what? This thing is gone. In the next hour, it is gone. Intimidating by saying, if you don't do this, you'll lose on such and such and such and such. If you, you know, so intimidation and the pressure go hand in hand, and that's how their, um, you know, fraud is happening to us as individuals, okay? Has this happened to any of you right here or to um, someone that you know, fraud already? He has? Goodness gracious, wow. So, and the next one will be, um, who are li likely to be the victims? Who is this gonna happen to? Who do you think? Anyone. Perfect, anyone, and guess what? And we even think ourselves that it'll happen, you know, to you, it won't happen to me, it's me included. It's anyone. And so it can go in from young adults, ages 18 to 24, the young adults, the young adults right now, they know it all. They don't want to be informed and they know it. So 18 to 24, I mean, they're like sponges out there thinking that they're, they are in the grown up world, but yet they're not informed consumers and thinking again, the easy price or, you know, as much as in technology they're in right now, that's how they can uh, be taken advantage of the young adults. The other ones could be uh, people over 55 and older, older, 55 and older. They live alone, no one to talk to, no family. The phone rings, it's like, yes, somebody called me, right? And they're wanting, you know, very um, innocent, wanting to talk to that person, wanting to share information, wanting just to, you know, talk to someone. So 55 and older, especially if they live alone, is happening. And <clears throat> the other ones will be uninformed um, un, um, consumers. The consumers, again, you hear of a scams out there. You hear, oh, it happened to my relative. It happened to my coworker. But again, they don't think it'll happen to them. So they're not in a rush or they're not into looking how to prevent and what is exactly and how it's happening, the scams out there. So it's the uninformed uh, consumer also that can be attacked. But yes, in general, it'll be anyone that could happen to. Okay? So what are the types of scams out there? Have you heard of any here lately, the news? Yes. <clears throat> what have you heard? Which one? Um, well, the group 55 and older. Mm -hmm. Right. 
checks. Oh. Get stuff fixed. <clears throat> you know, and they will be, and then they just vanish. Right. It is happening for remodeling or construction purposes. It's happening to elder. Right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Older people, they're home by themselves, nobody to guide them, and um, unattached from what's going on in the world. Exactly. Right. So the types of scams, you're going to laugh and you're going to think, like, really, I'm sitting here to hear this one? Guess what? Telemarketing. Still going on. The oldest, but yet still going on. Um, last year, the U.S., uh, they took advantage of people almost like $40 billion in telemarketing frauds. Billion. I mean, that is huge, 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 huge. But that was in telemarketing. And we think, again, it's not going to happen to me or it's not going on anymore or, you know, but telemarketing was the number one. You know, people calling us and trying to sell us something, getting our information. And once our information is out there, it's, you know, it's scary. It's bad. So <clears throat> the next one will be the magazine sales. It's still going on, too, as you can see, telemarketing and magazines. Magazine sales, be very careful as to what you're signing. I, a couple of years ago, like three years ago, I had this lady in the audience and she told me that in one of those sales of the magazines, she signed up for it, but not reading the fine print. I kid you not, she signed up for a 10 year contract. <laughs> 10 year contract, can you imagine? And that runs into thousands of dollars. And it was a contract. And the reason she's mentioning and, and um, it's because she couldn't get out of it. She didn't have no valid reason to get out of it. And she was into it. And then, yeah, later after a few years, she did stop paying in it, but it went into her credit report. So my God, I said, unbelievable. How can that be allowed? But hey, it's out there. But that was magazines. So the one you had mentioned right now, home improvement. Home improvement, people driving up and down the street or um, mainly like that. I mean, it's uh, somebody looking to fix something for you, but yet, you know, pay me first and I need the money up front and things like that. And uh, that's how they take advantage for home improvements. The next one will be um, donations, charity donations. That's a big one too, exactly. They're calling you, uh, it's so sad when they even said that it's the policemen or the firemen or United Way. It's sad and upsetting, but they use those uh, entities to get your money. And um, be, be on the lookout, exactly, don't. The best thing for any of this um, to prevent is that you make the approach that you call the United Way and say, hey, I have a donation for you. Or you call the police and you say, hey, I'm donating, where do I call, what do I do? You call them, not them calling you. I hate, you know, sometimes, yes, it's on the up and up. The policemen are calling for their annual uh, contributions. Yes, ma'am. You're absolutely right, exactly. I know nothing is uh, proof, you know, uh, foolproof, but at least we in our part is like, okay, I went to that police station and I went in there or I wrote the check to them exactly. How they use the funds now, you have no control of it, you know. There's always a bad apple somewhere. There's always, but again, for us to do the right thing and to be protected is to follow a couple of steps further than just having the convenience or just saying, oh, they call me, okay, I got it then and I'm gonna do it that way, you see? So we have to do our homework, we do the approach. So the next one will be also, again, the trips. When they're offering you those trips, be skeptical. Be skeptical, confirm the arrangements of the trip. Ask them questions. Don't just say, oh, I want it, okay. Ask them, okay, when am I gonna be leaving? Is there restrictions on dates? You know, um, how did you hear about me? How did you get my name? From where? Why? 
ask them questions. Don't just, you know, go with the flow of their conversation. Distract them too. Because again, that um, distraction from them to us is saying that we have won something and we're thinking about it even like, hmm, how did they get my name? Or uh, where did I put my name? And things like that we're thinking, but again, they're faster um, on giving us information and we just lose control of it, okay? The other one will be the prices and the sweepstakes, you know? Again, this, they're old information and probably you've heard it, but guess what, they're still around. So when they're um, offering you the prizes and sweepstakes, again, did you enter a contest? Did you fill out a form somewhere? You know, ask yourself, how long ago was this? Where did you get my information? Ask them questions. And then I truly don't recommend that you fill out any type of form for a contest at a mall or um, something so publicly like that. Because normally what they're doing is they're looking for uh, referrals names, you know, to later call you and sell you, try to sell you something. So don't, and then sometimes seriously, it takes even months for them to approach you. And by then you'll be like, yeah, I forgot. And that was three months ago, you know? So yeah, the prices and sweepstakes. And then always um, get the details in writing get them in writing, um, don't be fooled by official looking letters that they look, um, they have a seal or it has like a city of Dallas or um, something very official that you'll say, oh, I gotta pay attention to this. Yeah, pay the attention, but then be leery, be looking more for uh, other details of it, okay? And then um, always be cautious and do research. Research. Don't just because it fell in the mail or you have it or they called you, it's like, hmm, they have my details or they have, you know, they, they managed to contact me. But you gotta do research on them now. Um, get the person's name, get their extension, were you calling me, are you contracted, are you working directly? I mean, we got to ask questions and we don't. We just feel so secure that it was like, oh, it was the police department. It should be good and, and ready to go. So any questions about that information right there? All right, so the next question will be um, how to recognize a um, scam. So this is the uh, tricks of a con artist, okay? This is what the con artist's doing uh, out there. So they appear to be legitimate, professional, talking the right way, telling, you know, they know their topic, um, the right questions to ask. It is so difficult to recognize that person, as you can see, because they do appear to be legitimate. Very rare, I mean, the ones that, are doing a sloppy job, you'll catch them. But no, they're informed and prepared, especially if they're targeting in one area. Like for if they're talking all about credit cards or if they're talking about these trips, you know, that they're gonna offer you, they know everything about it. So again, we don't know everything about a trip. So, but from here on, you start preparing, asking the right questions too, right? So the other one would be, they uh, give something for nothing. That's what they say. <laughs> I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna give you that and there's nothing. But if they're gonna make you sign a contract or at the long conversation after having you on the phone for an hour, talking to you an hour, it's like, here it comes, here it comes. So there's nothing for free out there, believe me. One way or another, we're paying for it in the long run, the short run, or right away. Yes, we are. Um, he makes you feel like you can trust them. He does. That, they, they have to because otherwise you'll lose interest and you'll walk away and it's like, mm, I don't have time, I don't want to hear it. So trust. They're going to start um, talking, well, how many children do you have? Or oh, you look so good for, you know, or things like that. They're going to start uh, the easy way, getting a little bit of... Um, personal information from you and then expand it from there and then there they go. 
So they're going to um, obtain your trust. Then they will make you think that it's um, now or never, as I mentioned before. This is the time. The house is going, 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 gone if you don't sign up for it. Or that trip, you know, the lady before was so interested, you know, I might just go back and offer it to that person. So it's gone, gone, gone. Tell you what, it'll come back, believe me. <laughs> the other one, too, uh, we hear is that, you know, I'm going to make you rich. Just give me a couple of minutes and I'm going to make you rich. It could happen. They could have that one out there, too. And also, um, they could share other stories from other people, how they've worked for them. And now they're in a better position, or they've done that trip, or they have the house, how other people uh, already been through it. Okay? Any questions and comments from that one? We're good? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And so she just happened to see me as I was driving in. I'm so glad I come to these sessions. <laughs> <laughs> but I was amazed that before I arrived that she had already gone to the area and had gotten like four people to sign up. And I couldn't believe they gave her a information. She just walked on the street getting people, you know. To I give mean, that much she detail. Was she, she was mad at me when I thought about it. So thank you. No. Right. <laughs> Yes. And she went away monthly, but I think it was that those people signed up and gave all their personal information to right. a stranger. They don't know her. You're right. That's so true. I mean, it's better to be, um, you know, prepared and, again, awareness. You knew about it. But how strange, you know, for someone to be walking around a neighborhood with a tablet and obtaining that much information. It's not just the name and address, but no telling what other information, yes. That's a lot of information. I mean, here we are in a trusted place, and yet, you know, we're not asking you to give your social security number and, you know, give me this and that. No. No, it's a very valuable information and, and shouldn't be just given out like that. So the last one will be how to minimize the risk of becoming a victim. Okay? So find out how um, your personal information will be used, just as we were discussing. How will it be used? And what is, you know what, here lately, a lot, a lot of businesses, major businesses, they're using their uh, privacy um, policies. They have a printed, you know. So ask them. Ask them, do you have that in place? And I want to see it. I want it. You know, even though maybe, you know, it's just a made up thing, but at least you've done your homework once again, you'll have it. If something was to happen, you have all your ducks in the road, you'll defend yourself correctly, and you know, you'll take it to the next step. But ask them for the privacy policy and how they use your information, where do they store it? Where do they store it? Once it's stored, then how long are they gonna have it? Also, um, how will it be destroyed? How? And again, you know, you're doing your part. Once it gets, leaves your hands, I know it can go south and go in different areas, but at least you have that peace of mind for the moment and having it all written down too. And then once if and something didn't go right, then you have the rights also, again, to protect yourselves. Okay? Know who you're talking to, as I mentioned before too. You know, where are you calling from? Where's your company located? Is it here in Dallas? Is it in Houston? Where are you located? How long have you been in business? Ask them questions. You see, you, you got to surprise a lot of telemarketers out there. <laughs> They're going to hang up on you now. <laughs> Instead of us hanging up on them, you, they'll hang up on you because it's like, uh-oh, I wasn't expecting this. 
<laughs> so you only going to give out information um, that is actually needed for that transaction. You don't going to volunteer any additional information. You are not going to, if they keep asking you for more, again, question as to what's the need, why. So you only give in limited information. And again, I'm pretty sure if they contacted us, they have a Zulu of it already. But if not, is tell them, look, you must, you know me, you call me. You must have something already in file from me. So I can confirm what you have, but this is as much as I'm giving you, depending on the situation. Be limited on what you give them out. I mean, for things like this, I don't know, even uh, when I see that price check written out to me, then I might release my social security number. But other than that, over the phone, just to start the transaction, I personally wouldn't. Or I need to go to the office where you located so we can finish this, or you know, I take a, an attorney with me. I don't know, but make it something so um, solid. Then again, just the flow of a conversation, okay? And then, um, so you're going to start now from here on protecting. You're going to protect your credit cards, your bank accounts, and your social security number. Protect them. Be limited as to, again, the information you're giving out on based on your credit cards, your bank account, and your social security card. How many of you have your social security card in your wallets right now? In your wallet right now. I hope not, exactly. You shouldn't. No. No, no. <laughs> That's a no, no, too. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> we'll take it out of the wallet tonight. <laughs> The reason, again, God forbid, you walk out there, you get held up, and there it goes your information. There's no need. Yes, you only carry your social security card or your birth certificate needed places for employment, medical reasons, um, but don't carry it as an um, everyday thing. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Like, uh, I was about to take a contract job, uh -huh. and they want your driver's license and social security card. Is that okay? Yes. Well, ask them why. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> ask them why do you need my driver's license? Driver's license and social security. The social security will be for purpose probably for your um, income and. Uh, they need to verify the proof for exactly that you do have it, and then to write it down in. The driver's license too. That I don't know. <laughs> But ask them, you see? Ah, two forms. But even if I brought my social security card, I know to take it out immediately once you Right, for employment purposes, and then you leave it at home, right. But like that, you're asking me, you know, different companies, employers have different policies of requesting ID information, and probably is, some places ask like your driver's license and a credit card. Okay, some places it will be your driver's license and, and your um, social security. So you, but ask why, why do you need that? Um, I will say, for example, for me, if I was to be working at a fast food place and they ask me for my driver's license, like, I'm not going to be driving around here. And also, they want to use direct deposit, so you have to bring a check. So mm -hmm. Right. Deposit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Direct deposit will require a check so they can get all the correct information, the routing number, the account number, yes. Ask them what they're going to do with the check. Are they going to give it back to you or you write they void? Do, they, Write the word void on it. Oh, yes, I'll two or three times. Yes. The same thing applies with the passport. We shouldn't keep that in our purses either, right? No. Mm -mm. 
No. You shouldn't keep a lot of, whole lot of important information in your uh, wallets. Even, you know, a little bit of cash, $20, or depending, figure your day. How much are you going to be spending for the day? And then also limit your credit cards, ladies. We look like an accordion with the credit cards. Like, oh, I don't know which one, right? No, take one. If I'm going any many places, take the Visa MasterCard. But if you see, if you take your Macy's, your JCPenney's, those are one store usage. So, and then you carry them because temptation too, you might end up at Macy's or JCPenney's too. But if you carry that one credit card, you're limiting yourself as to where you're going for spending uh, reasons. And also if something was to happen, hey, they only got one. You know? Yes, ma'am. I only take um, my credit card if I'm going to use it. I don't ever take the credit card if I'm not going to use it. Perfect. The only card I have would be my ATM because you, I guess you can call and get your information, how much you got in your account, so you have to have ATM. Mm -hmm. But my ATM is wrapped with form paper. Yes, form. for the scanning part on the back. In the airport, especially, people will walk by you, and they have these little machines in their suitcases, and they, um, the magnetic strip can be red, and they steal your information. But simple enough, foil will do. Wrap it in foil, and it'll protect that magnetic strip. Seriously. Uh, uh, as I, much as I travel, I used to do the foil, but one of my girlfriends embarrassed me, like, really, you're using foil? And it's like, well, well it's protecting it. There's a little uh, sleeve. I'll show you at the end how I have mine. <laughs> they gave it to me because they were laughing at my foil. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to go buy anything. Foil is doing it. Foil will, you know, that's that. But as a gift, they gave it to me. So, yes, protect your information. The magnetic strips can be read, um, especially I, when I heard it, it was at the airports. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just crossing back and forth, so you're not even uh, aware of it. It happens. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. That's a scam out there. So also for your credit cards or your debit um, cards, let me um, suggest to you guys that if you're going to a department, to a place, a store, restaurant that you don't frequently go to, and you're swiping your ATM. Let's go with the ATM. I'm sorry. It's the ATM. Your debit card, instead of um, using your PIN number, ask it to be signed to sign it, okay? So that way we'll, um, if something was to happen at that place, uh, they steal their information or they want to misuse it, it will be a little bit longer of tracking, you know, how to get your information personally because you have signed for it and you didn't enter your PIN number. Again, for places that you frequently don't go to, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. And so Bank of America still hasn't given me my money back, but I, I filed fraudulent charges. Mm -hmm. He said it's a process, but I was still like, you know, it wasn't something that I did. Right. But they were like, call Walmart. But I know several people who this has happened when they went to Walmart. I can't believe I even used my debit card at Walmart. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's just a warning. Right. Gas stations, you know, you go and pay at the gas station. They say even from far away, somebody's looking to get your PIN numbers or just, you know, steal your information. So be careful of the places you visit. I know, I mean, Walmart, who would imagine, right? But hey, yes. Well, I was fraud at Walmart. It's been several years ago where I used to always write checks all the time, just all over the place. Do you know what somebody did? They actually... Got, and it was at Walmart, they got my checking account account number and they went to Waco and they, they wrote, you know, they wrote a check with, on, with my information. Right. 600 something. Uh -huh. And then I went to 
Wells Fargo to close that account and the lady didn't close it the right way and she still allowed money even though you were moving from one place to the next. Then they went to Wiley and did another 600 and some dollars. Even though I didn't even have enough funds, they still let it go through. So I had My to goodness. I had to do <clears throat> Oh. And then he showed me in Wiley when the lady got ready to, it was a scam in this Walmart. Mm -hmm. The lady got ready to pay, she used one check, it didn't work, so she used, she said, let me try this one, and it was mine. Oh, when gosh. She used my account number, she used somebody else's driver's license number, and somebody else something else, and put it all together. And oh. the At Walmart. Yes. <laughs> Again, my dear people, I mean, there's, we can sit here all day and compare this scam seriously. There's so many of them, like right now, because of technology, be leery of emails you receive. Don't just, you know, open them and, and uh, approve them or, you know, go with the flow of it. It's like, where did they come from? Mm -hmm. That you're paying, mm -hmm. I do not write any checks to anybody other than my credit union where I monitor it. Mm -hmm. That way they send the check for me, but they do not have my account number. Yeah, oh, right. Me, that way it's paying my bills, but it's good for you that's that's a, a sense of control and, and safety and doing it something different perfect because my next um my next comment <clears throat> was going to be to protect your financial information you take responsibility don't leave it out to the uh to the businesses out there that they're doing it for you we we're hearing it over and over especially in holidays you know how best buy target i mean these major major stores how their information gets you know uh, taken so we again as an individual we have to take the responsibility for me let me share this this is me i take cash everywhere I take cash, it limits me on how much I'm gonna spend, and then my, all of my information is not gonna be out there. That's just me. But you know, we, got, we have to do something different in order to avoid all of this coming at us, okay? So do you have any questions? A debit card is the worst thing because it's coming directly out of your account. Mm-hmm. credit card because that way you have to Exactly. So any other questions about uh, avoiding um, the, I mean, the artist camps? Because I'm done with the presentation in that area. And then in the other side, I will share the, the resources um, as to if something was to happen in scams, you can report it, where to reach out. It is on the uh, identity theft uh, part, okay? So there's more information to come. So any other questions or comments about scams? All right, let's get started on identity theft then. I'm going to be using this. Yes? So then, do you recommend, I've heard something like, what is it, something locked? Like identity theft. Ah, we're going there now. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the, the beauty of the topics, it kind of goes with um, hand in hand. What's the scams out there? How are they going to use it? Blah, blah. And now we're coming to the identity theft. If they've stolen your security, how to protect yourself now, how to also um, look out for it, okay? So once again, I'm working out of this handout now, so you can make your notes in there. So identity theft. Um, upon the completion of this uh, presentation, you'll have a better understanding, which I'm gonna cover the um, one, two, three, four, five um, topics, how Thieves use your identity, how your personal information is stolen, actions if, um, if you're a victim, five habits to protect against identity theft, and the resources to assist you. I'm going to be covering those, okay? So let's get started here. The identity theft is... Um, the term to it is um, referred to a crime 
involving the legal usage, illegal usage of another's individual's identity. So someone, someone else wants to use your information, your identity, and for the gains of what? What would they gain with it now? Once they have this information, how could it be used? Such as um, purchases. purchases, exactly. They'll go obtain loans, a car, houses, for credit purposes. That's the number one and big often use, for credit purposes. Other ones, legal, believe it or not, legal. You get stopped on the side of the road, they're gonna give you a ticket, it's like, oh no, I'm Jane Doe today. <laughs> so they'll give all this, if they have somebody else's information in mind already, they can say, you know, I'm Jane Doe, I live at such and that, and if they don't get verified, then it can get away with it, and guess what, Jane Doe will have a ticket. And when Jane Doe get really, really stopped, it's like, surprise, we've been looking for you, Jane Doe. So it can be used for legal purposes, identity. And then uh, the identity to assume somebody else's identity. I want to be Jane Doe. And I'm going to walk through Dallas and saying that I am Jane Doe. And here is my social security number. Here is my um, banking information. I am Jane Doe. I assume somebody else's identity. So those are the three major reasons identity theft happens out there. Okay. And then so who is this happening to? Who, who are the people? It could be, again, anyone, right? But I have some percentages um, to share with you. 19%, it could be to a relatives. 5%, it could be to a neighbor or a roommate. 14%, it could be a friend or a coworker. 4%, it's um, your ex-spouse or significant other. So again, it could be just anyone, as you can see. We just have the different titles of being, you know, the neighbor, the roommate, a business. It's just, it's just anyone again. Again, to be awakened that even your children, and I'll get in a little bit about children in a minute here, okay? And so in what percentages is the um, information that was stolen, I mean, your identity is going to be used? We mentioned the credit cards. So the strongest part there is about 26%, it goes into a credit card usage. 26%. Um, to steal in regards to utilities, 18%, it can happen. So again, it's in regards that anything and everything um, to obtaining other in their own name, they can go and use it out there for credit cards, utilities, loans, um, you name it, it could be out there already. Okay, so be aware, be awakened that when it comes at you, you, you gotta turn on your little red light and say, wait a minute, why so many questions or why so many information needed? Okay, so let's get into the questions. How thieves use your identity? And I just covered them. So the financial part will be the lines of credit and open um, to be open in that victim's name financially, the criminal, the criminal again, traffic tickets, um, they committed a crime and they won't give the right information right away, they caught them stealing something or they done a crime, some crime, and they will not give their correct information right up front. And if they let them go, oh my God, that's a nightmare right there because they'll be creating legal problems for that other person. And then the identity of cloning as wanting to be Jane Doe myself, identity cloning. Any questions about that? So how is your personal information stolen? So the thief will look for um, the pre-approved applications. We throw trash like it. it is trash, exactly. But somebody else is treasures. <laughs> You've heard it. Um, they'll go in, into your receipts. If you leave them like at the restaurant, at the table, 
I've seen it so many times. It's just like, I want to pick it up and give it to the waitress, but it's like, no, I'm not even going to pick it up because I can, you know, be at fault. But I see them, it's like, okay. So your receipts, um, restaurants, department stores, anywhere that you leave them laying around, you think they're innocent, that doesn't have much information? But believe me, for someone else that wants to do a bad deed, it will have plenty of information, okay? The mailbox where um, even residential, those mailboxes that are right there by the street where the mailman drops them, there's people that drive by and pick up mail from it. They'll do it. Or if you live in an apartment, how convenient, they put a trash can in there so you can throw all of this unwanted trash, and you're throwing it in there, of course. But again, somebody coming behind you, they'll see, oh, that was a coupon I didn't get, and go for the coupon. Or they'll see that pre-approved um, letter, or they'll see something that will catch their eye and go through the, uh, through the trash and get it. So that's very innocent. That's also called like a dumpster um, diving. Dumpster diving. Dumps, dumpster diving. Dump. <laughs> so that um, goes hand in hand. People go through trash and they find treasures. <laughs> okay? So the other one, a uh, person that could pose as policemen, landlords, um, some authority. Um, they can pose as someone. It's so very hard. I know it's like, okay, when I walk out of here, I'm going to walk in a bubble shell because <laughs> who's looking at me, right? No, it doesn't have to be. We just have to open our eyes once again and be just that trust, that's the bottom line, that trust. Let me get to know you a couple of hours before I even give you my address, you know? Instead of a one minute conversation, hey, how are you? Yeah, I live at the, you know, 2211 such and such. A minute versus a couple of hours, please. You see the difference? Not giving so much so quickly and too much of it again, okay? Um, let's see, personal information stolen, so fraudulent uh, charges. Um, they can change your addresses too. Believe me, it's so scary because I've done it. I did it, but it was legal. <laughs> I went to the post office and I asked for a change of address uh, form. They gave it to me. No questions, no nothing. And I filled it out. It was for a relative. But they just gave me the information. And they're like, wow, this is scary. Because you're not having like, oh, she came, you know, Miss Perez came this day. She will be changing address. At least a little ledger thing. No. They gave me the thing. The, the, it's a little packet as it is. And then I just took it home. I filled it out and I put it in the mail. And it happened. So I'm thinking, I'm on the up and up here. <laughs> and pe people, that, you know, they can walk into this uh, post office and say, I need to do a change of address. So if you start not seeing some of your statements not coming in or something that you used to receive very often and you don't receive it now, hey, go check at the post office. You might have a new address and you didn't know about it. <laughs> so it happens, okay? And they don't have to ask permission or they don't have no uh, tracking. And then um, the other way it will be if they were to steal your wallet or your purse. That's how they will obtain all of this information. So that's why carry much, much less in your uh, wallets. You know, us girls, we like these bags. They look like suitcases. <laughs> and we just go to town. We have everything and anything in case of emergency, huh? Well, we might have little nothings in those bags. You know, nothing of importance, nothing. But does the thief know that? They don't. They say, oh, voila, she's carrying her whole house in there. Let's get it now. You see that? They don't know. So even smaller wallets or non, more non-important things to be carrying if we are carrying such big bags now. Seriously. It is uh, tracking, uh, attracting at attention. And such a big thing, bags, you know, I'm trying to go smaller too myself. I'm traveling right now because now my shoulder is hurting too. So. 
the, you know, the wallets and, and the uh, purses. Any questions and comments on that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Just exactly. Yes, I've seen that one too. Yes, ma'am. It upsets me dearly that when you go to the county tax place, they have your address, your name, the, the size of the house. It's like, are you kidding me? Yes, it, I've seen that. I've done a research, but yes, it's scary. So um, let's go into the actions um, for action steps if you're a victim. So what we're going to do very first thing is document your actions. Document your actions. What have you started doing already? Have you contacted the credit bureau? Have you done your police report? Have you called these places already, like the credit cards and things like that? Document everything that you're doing already, your steps. The next one will be, you're gonna be filing the police report. File a police report. The next one you're going to do is that you're going to place a fraud alert on your credit reports, all three of them. A fraud alert. All three of them. And then also you're going to do a security freeze on the report itself. And maybe you might want to alert where you have your checking account. Uh, or credit cards and discuss that, the freeze, how it will work for you, um, how long will it be, you know, stay in place. Um, because sometimes when you do that, it becomes a little difficult, difficult even for you if you freeze. Because you would have to call the institute and say, uh, well, I'm at Walmart today and I need to get $20. <laughs> so get information if you're going to be freezing your personal accounts too, okay? So those right there are some of the most um, obvious, important steps that you can take. All right. Now we're going into the five habits to protecting against identity theft. The first one, you're going to start getting into the habit as of today for many reasons, not just because identity theft, um, to order all three credit reports, all three of them. You, um, you can go through www.annualcreditreport.com. Have you heard of that one before? Yes. Great. They are coming directly from all three credit bureaus, Experian, Aquifex, and TransUnion. The report itself, it is completely free once a year to all consumers. And it's not that I'm standing here to giving them business or promoting them. It is this that this site or this service, it is for us consumers, to any consumer. It was um, developed through the uh, fair and accurate credit transactions. So it's for us consumers. It's a safe site, it's free. So what I want you to start looking for your credit report also is to making sure that that information is current, it's yours, and there's no identity theft going on because right now identity theft it is the largest silent crime going on and we do not become aware, um, especially in financials, not until we're going for the next loan or the next credit card. Then that uh, lender will flag us and say, well, you put three credit cards on this application, but yet I see eight credit cards on your credit report. So what is going on? And we don't want the lender to educate us. We have to be preparing ahead of the game. So pulling your credit reports, all three of them. The www.annualcreditreport.com, it is online, of course, but you can also do it over the phone or on the, by mail. And um, on that book, on the big book on, on that side, there's a page even to um, the form to order it by mail, okay? So first of all, 
the credit reports. The second thing you're going to start doing, you're going to shred paper. You're going to shred receipts, and even if it's junk mail, even if it's junk mail, receipts and all, shred. Before the shred machine came out, I used to do it by hand or with scissors, and my kids would laugh at me. They would call me the human shredder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I, I graduated to a little machine. <laughs> but no, listen, the junk mail, seriously, and it's mentioned right now because that's what they're looking for. Even for those that have resident and it has your address, it, those are the easier, easier ones to obtain. Guess why? Because I'll be your new resident in there. I just put my name. You left it open. I have the address. Now you, I, you know there's a name to it. So those are also, if you don't shred the whole thing, at least the area where it has your name and address or resident and address. All that is information to give them a reason to, uh, you know, be ahead of the game. So shredding. Then um, you're going to start doing the opt-out uh, pre-screen for credit cards offers. Opt-out. OPT. And that information is in the book also. Opt out, mm -hmm. pre-screening for uh, pre-approved applications. That will limit. If you're getting so many of them, it would um, diminish that. That way you apply where you want to apply. So the opt out. I'm going to give you the phone number. But the information, again, is, is all in this uh, other details. The phone number is 1-888-382. 1222. Okay? Again, it's in the books. Now, the other step for um, step four, you're going to start looking, reading your credit card statements and bank statements from on, reading them. Now, it's like, okay, it's here, it's due on the 16th, that's all I needed to know. No, look in the details. Look in the details and nobody else has made charges on you. That's what you're looking for. No additional charges from anyone else. Those are your charges alone. So you have to read them. Your bank statement, again, is there less money in there? Or is there hopefully we'll want more money, right? <laughs> but, you know, that'll flag you like, okay, is there a mistake from the bank or somebody did what? We have to look at the bank statements and the credit card statements. And as we've been talking all along to guard the last one, number five, guard your social security number, your credit card numbers, and any other personal information. You guard it. You decide where you want to give that credit card number to and why. How long is it going to stay on file? How is that going to be protected? How is that going to be disposed of? We need to ask these questions. We are so trusting and we don't. Right now, um, in this area, let me mention about um, children's identity theft. That's the second growing um, crime going, growing crime right now. It's a, probably a 51% uh, nationwide. The reason for, again, they're children. And um, you don't expect it. You know, what do they have? But that's why. They don't have anything. They're using their social security numbers to open credit cards, buying cars, renting apartments. You name it, they're using their information, just like a grown-up. But this is our children's information. So if you have children or know of someone that has children, please, they also, they need to check their credit reports once a year to see if there's any build up information in there already. And this one is a little bit different. You will need to contact the credit bureau directly and they will guide you as to what are the steps because they might have to ask you to actually send their social security card or their birth um, certificate. It's a little bit different, but it can be done. And then if there's such a file already established on them, you can ask them to freeze it. Tell them this is a minor. 
and there's no movement in there. People under 21 and under shouldn't have any credit cards. There was a 2009 Act law in, um, that it prohibits for young adults to have credit cards. It's 21 and under. The only exception will be if the person can show proof of income or if they're gonna be an authorized user, like if my mom said, oh, it's okay for her to use my credit card and I'm only authorized to use it. Or if that um, 21 and under has um, as a, um, what's it called? It is a, um, oh, it just escaped me, uh, co-signer, as a co-signer. Those are the only three reasons that a person of 21 and under should have credit at this time. Proof of income, that they are working, authorized user, or a uh, co-sign account. So for children 10 years old, 15 years old, and they have already credit, it's not, it's been, their information has been stolen. So again, that has to be from here on, keep an eye on that, okay? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. It's happening, as I mentioned right now. And we gotta spread the word out there that, you know, stay on top of it because it's a nightmare for adults or children to start straighten that out. So, yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you familiar with PayPal? Uh, the credit card to pay online? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I would rather use PayPal when I'm purchasing online than using my Visa or MasterCard or my debit card. And at least I'm limited to that account. And if anything was to happen, I just deal with PayPal. It is a much secure account. Right. For, yeah. But again, just be, depending where you're going to make your purchases. Maybe some of these businesses not on the up and up on the other side. I mean, use Amazon or something more noble that you know of than uh, something like, where did you come from? Or again, if you haven't done the research, yeah. If you haven't said, uh, if you don't know that, you know, that store has been in business like for 20 years or somebody really has already been buying from there, again, I will stay away from it. Okay, so that was uh, identity theft for children. Please stay on top of that one too. And so what are your, um, the resources to assist you? If this was to happen, um, you're gonna be contacting or looking with the Federal Trade Commission. You can also, there's uh, sites in, um, for the Internet Crime Complaint Center, Internet Crime Complaint Center, depending if your social security was um, compromised or you feel that you, know, you might have to contact the IRS, the uh, Postal Inspectors Department, and maybe the social security hotline. So depending what has been stolen and taken from you, you want to um, be in contact or you want to look into the Federal Trade Commission Internet Crime Complaint Center, the IRS, the Postal Inspectors Department, and Social Security. And this book has all that information right here. You see? It's all there in condensed. So, do I have any questions or any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Right. 
your tax person, exactly. Where did they come from? Again, ladies, um, it is about asking, how are you gonna use this information? How is it well storage? And once you're done with it, how are you gonna dispose of it? And believe me, like right now for children, when they, you're in, um, enrolling them like in some little league place, they ask you for the social security number. It's like, no, they don't need it, exactly. Or you can say, is there any other alternative in ID that you can use? Yes, but that's too drastic to have a social security to enroll them for something like that. So even for us, again, grownups, that when they're asking you for all of this information, you can say, no, you're not gonna have this right now, or I'm gonna go do business somewhere else, or why is it that you need it? And if you need it, is there any other type of ID that I can supply you with? So there's ways that we can ask and get through it, but if we're not asking and just like, you know, if we're carrying a conversation right now and you tell me, um, I need this, 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 get my wallet, start taking it out, and there is on the table. After that, what are you gonna do with it? If I didn't ask, I don't know and I'm out of there. I gave you what you needed. But again, it's being prepared, protected, that you are not as, again, that trusting part is so hard to let go, but um, we just have to be protected. And we ourselves as an individual, don't let it up to the lenders, because as you can see, what's happening to those major stores, they're stealing the information through there too. So be very careful. And with that, I thank you so much for your time and participation and being here on a Saturday morning. Thank you so much for being here. Could you please fill out the um, evaluation? What happened? Sure. No telling, you see, this is federal, and this is supposed to be the highest, you know, insecurity, insecurity right? So nothing is foolproof. Nothing is foolproof. And now for them, probably they're gonna have to have some guidelines as to what to follow, what to look for, where could that information have gone to, and for them to keep an eye for. So, you know, it goes into sections, and they're probably already being told. One thing um, I wanna share quickly, too, in regards to if you're looking for protection, and you're gonna pay for it, again, nothing is foolproof. It could still happen. So it's asking questions, you know? If, um, if I'm gonna give you my business, is this, um, are you gonna also, you know, resolve the problem? Or are you just gonna alert me? So what is the need for these protections? I mean, because it's not foolproof, what it'll do for you, it's probably just give you a quick alert. Hey, it's happening right now, let's put a stop, and that's about it. And then maybe, again, if they are wanting to uh, fix the problem, that's the second part for you too. Those are the benefits of it. But it's not gonna keep it from happening. It'll call you and say, hey, it has happened or it's going to happen just about now. And you have no way of, you know. The other thing, paying for it, sky's the limit. But you have to do your homework. The other thing in that is that probably right now, you guys, if you have employer's assistance programs at your jobs, you might ask them if they have that service already and it's actually free for us already. Through the employer's assistance programs, some credit unions have it for free. Um, if you're a member, such as the AAA, they could already have it for free uh, for you to a certain extent, but at least it'll be free. Now, some of these credit card places are offering uh, protections, so take advantage of them too. Yes, ma'am. Are you familiar with credit cards? Yes, ma'am. Do you recommend it? It's a service. It's a service uh, for us consumers that are not educated, wanting to do what we have to do. So, I mean, it has its pros and its cons. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a service. Everything that is doing for you, we could do it ourselves too. Yeah, but it can be a guideline to get you started until you get more comfortable or familiar to what's going on. But um, I did a credit report um, 
presentation a couple of months ago, and someone in the audience told me, well, Credit Karma suggested that I get open 10 credit cards by the end of the year. That just gave me my heart attack right there. <laughs> That's too much. 10 credit cards, opening six right away and then work the way up. And I said, no, my God, no, because less is best right now. So that, I'm not sure what they saw in his profile or why they recommend it, but that was too much. So be, again, take the information, do a comparison, do more research, and see if it's actually beneficial to you. Because it's a recommendation based on what you put. And if you put something that it's like, oh, this is you know cushiony or not admitting the actual truth, it'll come out with probably a crazy answer too. <laughs> so be careful with Credit Karma. Those are service products to us because again, as consumers that are not well educated and informed, they're popping out there, like free credit scores and things like that. Again, the, those are were not, you know, in the last three, five years, they're starting to pop out. But for the pricing of protection, if you're gonna look into it, look into, like I said, some of your banks already offering you like monitoring your credit reports and things like that, that's plenty. But we have to do our parts in staying on top of things, okay? Thank you for your time.